Hello and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing my ride or die makeup tutorial. Essentially, I'm going to be using all the products that I have been obsessed with as of lately or products that aren't necessarily new but new to me that I have been completely head over heels for that I literally cannot complete a full face of makeup without. Mm, I'm attached. So before I start rambling on a little bit too much, Let's hop right into this video, but first, if you're new here, hey, what's up, hello, I'm Kiana, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, as well as that bell icon to stay notified on whenever I upload my videos. If you're not new, then welcome back, and let's get into it. So, for today's video, I'm going to be covering all of my Ride or Die products, from literally skincare to eyelash glue to literally everything I'm currently obsessed with, like, obsessed with. So these products I'm going to be showing you are my ish lately, like literally couldn't live without them. So I'm going to do a very quick rinse of my skin, just kind of make sure everything's off my face. I'm going in with my Bioderma. This is the micellar cleanser for face and eyes because we want it for face and eyes. Literally cleanse my whole entire face. I'm now going to go in with this guy. So this is my Jurlique. It is the Rose Water Balancing Mist. Ooh, this stuff is so good. It's pretty much like a toner. So just miss my whole entire face. I need to be nice and balanced. This is honestly helped with my redness, gives a little bit more moisture to the skin, and I really feel like I do notice a difference when applying my makeup. I feel like everything just adheres a little bit better, it goes on a little bit easier, so obsessed with this guy. So I have a few different moisturizers that I love to go in with. If you've watched a few of my previous videos, you know I love my Bosha Subaki Glotion. Literally gives me the most beautiful glow to the skin. It's a nice and lightweight, but just makes me look radiant. I love it. So the last product that I like to go in with for my skin prep is my Origins A Perfect World SPF 40 H Defense Moisturizer with White Tea. So with this, since it has your SPF 40, it is going to be a little bit of a thicker consistency if you can see that. Like, whew. It's definitely thick, so I like to go in with honestly like this much. Warm it up in between my fingers. And just press this into my skin. So I of course like to go in with a little bit of a lip prep before applying anything. I like to go in with my Bite Agave Lip Balm. This stuff is amazing. Definitely a little bit of a thicker consistency. It has a vanilla scent to it, so it's actually really, really nice. So now that skin prep's done, I'm going to zoom you on in a little bit closer and we can hop into our eyes. Come here. Perfect. Now that we are nice and close, I'm going to go in with my all-time favorite ride or die eyeshadow primer that I've been obsessed lately. I used to love the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but now I love the Smashbox 24-hour Photo Finish Eyeshadow Primer. Obsessed. So it's very kind of similar consistency to the face primers where it almost has like that smoothing kind of texture to it. Which I'm honestly not a fan of the face primers, but the eye primer is bomb obsessed. So I like to really just warm this up in between my fingers and just tap this on the lower lash line on the lid just to make a nice base. So I have a few eyeshadow palettes that I've been obsessed with. Two are custom created eyeshadow palettes that I personally made. So of course I have to be obsessed with these eyeshadows because I picked them out and I paid for them. But I've also been loving my Urban Decay Jean Basquiat, or Jean-Michel Basquiat. Um, this is the, ooh, I can't remember what this one is called. This is the colorful one. Um, they're colorful eyeshadow palettes. I cannot remember the name to save my life. The Tenant. The Tenant eyeshadow palette. Tenant. Tenant. I'm going to jump into my custom palette, and I'm going to take just the white matte setting color. We're going to throw that all over the lid. Just pretty basic. 
This is an eyeshadow, different, pretty sure it's from Makeup Art Designery or Mud Cosmetics. When I took my certification program, this is the makeup we used. And I'm obsessed with this color because it literally just neutralizes my lid. It goes on really nicely as well. So I'm just going to throw that literally everywhere, all over the eye. I'm going in with Orange Soda from Anastasia, this guy right here, just on a Morphe M513 brush. Just going to use that as a transition color, so just popping that right in the crease. Just blending this guy out. This has been my all-time favorite transition color for literally ever. I use this all the time. I remember going into Sephora when I was younger and I bought this, and I felt so bougie because I'm like... I'm buying Anastasia eyeshadows, and everyone loves orange soda, so it's gonna be mine. And now it's like, I think everyone's forgotten about this eyeshadow at this point, but I still love it. Still am obsessed with it. I'm gonna hop into this custom eyeshadow palette, I'm gonna take this purple right here. This is Nocturnal from MAC. Literally used to be my all-time favorite eyeshadow. I still love it. I actually haven't reached for this in quite a while. I don't know why I'm including this, but when I did used to reach for this all the time, I was obsessed with it because it just gives a little bit of plummy purple, you know, ness, plummy purpleness to the eye. So I'm just going to go kind of right below the orange soda and applying that. Same brush, same kind of windshield wiping motions, just slightly building up this color. Just kind of soft and feathered. We can even feather it out a little bit more over here to give almost like a blown out look to the eye. Now I'm just going to take my Morphe E27 blending brush. Just kind of blend that out all over the eye. Just to diffuse, blend out the colors. This brush is literally, honestly, bay when it comes to blending. It's like an airbrush concealer brush or an airbrush blending brush. I like to use it for like concealer as well because since it's that duo fiber airbrush finish, it's literally just beautiful on the eye. It's so beautiful. And I meant beautiful. It's just beautiful in general. So now I'm going to hop into the Jean-Michel Basquiat eyeshadow palette and I'm going to take the shade Neo. This purple right on over here. And I'm actually going to pack this. I think I'm going to pack it all over my lid. So I'm just going to take a very small stubby eyeshadow brush. Pick up some of this. Pack it everywhere. These eyeshadows are super pigmented. They're actually really creamy. They're very blendable. Especially for like some matte, matte satin eyeshadows. So I know like personally trying out different brands of mattes and satins. They're either very dry and chalky. Or just very powdery, but these guys just blend out. Honestly, like a dream. And then I'm gonna go with the E27 blending brush. Just blend that all out up into the crease as well. I'm actually gonna take like my Morphe M506 brush, which I'm obsessed with, and I'm gonna take the shade 1960, which is like this hot-ish pink-ish color. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit. Thought I was gonna do sunset. I lied. I'm going to pop this right into the crease and just give a little bit more definition, flick it out right at the outer corner, just to give a little bit more color contrast so it's not just all purple, and then just blend that out very ever so slightly. I am now going to go in with the best black pencil liner I've ever used in my whole entire life. Um, it's from Sephora Collection. Fun fact, so it's affordable. It is the 12 hour wear contouring eye pencil in the shade black velvet. This stuff is waterproof, it's transfer proof, it's smudge proof. It is absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to tight line my eyes with this stuff. Just get right underneath the lashes. So now I'm going to move on into winged liner or eyeliners, felt tip liners, because I cannot do gel and I cannot do other other liners. It has to be felt tip. So I have been obsessed with two felt tip liners um, lately. I've been loving the, this is the high definition felt tip liner, liquid pencil, liquid pen from New York Color NYC. Love it. 
but I've been also loving my Kat Von D tattoo liner. Ride or die. Literally everyone and their mother owns this. If you not, if you do not have it, go out and buy it. You will be as obsessed as I am because the tip is just so flexible. It really just get, lets you wing everything out. But for this guy, it has a little bit of a larger tip. But it's super black and super, 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 super pigmented. Like, So for this guy, I like to map out my wings with this, fill in with this. So I like to use them both. So I'm just going to go in, create just a little wing. I am then going to do the nice line on my upper lash line with the Kat Von D tattoo liner. Since the tip is super flexible, I can create a very, very nice thin line. So now that we have the upper lash line lined, I like to go in with my NYC felt tip liner again and just start connecting everything. Okay. So I like to kind of start like right in that center of the wing then pull inwards so since everything is just so matte and flat I am gonna go in with my all-time favorite glitter um, this is the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Liner I am obsessed with these obsessed 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 I like how you have a built-in adhesive it's easy to use so I'm going to pop this let's do Right in this inner portion of the eye. Let's go right in here. So now that we have a little bit more glitter and a little bit more sparkle in the eyes, I'm going to pop on some lashes. And my all-time favorite lashes at the moment. Give it two seconds if you can guess. Then I love you. One. Two. Flirt lashes from Sephora collection. Come on, get in focus. There we go. So these bad boys are my all-time favorite lashes. These are the Flirt Lashes from Sephora collection. Um, I already have a pair open right on over here, so I'm just going to use my older ones because there's no point in opening a new pair of lashes when the old ones work just as fine. Also, House of Lashes Lash Glue, Ride or Die Lash Glue. If you're looking for a lash glue that's literally going to just keep your lashes on all day, 14 hours, no like inner corner, outer corner, center portion of the lash popping up, um, House of Lash Glue, House of Lashes Lash Glue is phenomenal. So as you can see with these lashes, they just give the right amount of volume and definition to the eye. They're so pretty in this eye look. Ooh. So pretty. So I always finish up my lower lash line at the very end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom you back on out and we can work on the complexion. Perfecto. Ready to go. Ooh. So, for complexion, I'm very, very, very particular on what I use. I tend to go to the same products over and over and over again, so usually when I do complexion in my tutorials, I really speed through it, but today I'm going to really just break everything down to you and really explain why I use every product for my face. I'm going to go in with my Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 setting, prepping, and replenishing, or re yeah, replenishing spray. So this has the coconut water to hydrate, so I like to point this upwards. I'm going to let my skin bathe. Just like the primer, the priming spray is going to give you some hydration, has the coconut water to really just hydrate and prep the skin. Um, even for someone who's very oily like myself, I still like to be hydrated because I just feel like everything goes on a little bit easier, opposed to trying to do just everything matte, 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 and then when I go to put matte foundation on, it's just dry. Now I'm going to go in with my Makeup Forever Step 1 Hydrating Primer. So if you know me, you know that I am obsessed with Makeup Forever primers. I swear by them. It's literally pretty much all I use for primers, um, besides 
a few others that I have. Um, but this, similar to the Priming Spray, is just going to give me some hydration. Um, has the hyaluronic acid instead of the coconut water to hydrate. Um, but I just put this literally all over my skin. I'm obsessed with this. Literally obsessed. Now, this is a product that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about or haven't really spoke about because it's from a brand that didn't really go over so well. So this is from the Estee Edit from Estee Lauder. So again, the line just didn't, I think, go over as well as it wanted to. But I have been obsessed with the Pore Vanishing Stick. So good. So you're going to have kind of like a tinted portion in the center and then the white outer portion. I go with this everywhere on my face because I have very large pores. So if I want to vanish my pores, then I have to go in everywhere with this. This just honestly smooths out my skin, but it doesn't make me feel greasy, which is nice. I hate when pore smoothing primers, which is like 99.9% .9 of them, just make me feel gross and greasy because I'm already oily. I don't want to be even more greasy, oily feeling, but this just feels so silky so smooth and it really just does even out my complexion now i'm gonna go in with a few things to help color correct my skin because as you can see i'm red i'm blue i'm yellow so i'm just gonna go in with my elginist color correcting drops these are my ride or die color correctors i use the one in green and the one in pink i would not oh no come back I would not trade these for the world because they're going to get skincare as well as cosmetics all in one. So I like to take the pink under the eye. I just got these all over my lashes. Help. I also like to take these around the sides of my mouth just because I'm very yellow. Like around, I like guess my beard area. I'm very, very yellow. Then I'm just going to take my Real Technique sponge. Not as good as my Beauty Blender, but my Beauty Blender is absolutely disgusting right now. It's the nude one, which doesn't really look like it's super dirty, but it is so gross. I probably need a new one. But I just like to blend all of this out. I like how squishy the Real Technique sponge is, though. It's not as good as my Booty Blender, but it does the job. Now I like to go in with the green ones. On my cheek area. It's not even funny how red I am. And then down along my nose. These are going to be pretty good coverage. And I feel like they sit the best. They're the color correctors that I feel like that I've tried that sit the best and that don't leave any sort of discolored mask on my skin. Like, I know a lot of green primers just tend to give that green residue, but these guys balance everything out and no green mask anywhere. Mm. Now I'm going to go in with my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. This has been my go-to for the last month and a bit, two months. I have not found anything that works this good ever, so um, literally has been my ride or die foundation lately. I'm going to go in with my Real Techniques sponge. I'm going to start dotting this everywhere. Start blending it in. It's going to be nice, full coverage, porcelain doll finish. Whenever I wear this foundation, I always get compliments from everybody. They're like, oh my goodness, what's on your skin? What do you use? I need that. I do a lot of double wear along with 10 other million gazillion things. Because everyone always seems to think that it's one thing that I put on my face. If there was one product that I could put on my face to give me... My, the results that all these products are going to give me, uh, trust me, I'd be using it. But there is literally not one product that I can throw on my face and get my end results. So now I'm going to go in with a throwback product that everyone used to use that I recently just started using again. I used to use it, stopped using it because I totally forgot about it. But now I'm obsessed with my MAC Pro Long... Ugh. I'm obsessed with my MAC Pro Long Wear Concealer. Um... This stuff looks so good. It makes everything just look filtered and flawless and airbrushed and like... Ugh. I like to take it up on a concealer brush. 
go up underneath my eyes start pressing this concealer onto my face I like to take this pretty far out along the sides of my nose I don't know what I was doing before like I thought I had it good with my Too Faced Born This Way concealer but girl let me tell you that Born This Way concealer was nothing compared to this nothing so now that we have foundation and concealer on I'm gonna go with my holy grail powder at the moment Use to love Laura Mercier, but no, I love this. The Kat Von D Lock It Translucent Setting Powder. So essentially this is a full coverage translucent setting powder, meaning it's going to provide coverage but be completely clear, which is weird, but it really honestly it does provide coverage. I never understood the magic of it either, but if you leave it on for too long, or if you leave it on for a decent amount of time, you're gonna see like a huge huge difference everything is going to be almost like masked out and it's gonna be super super bright and then instead of taking a brush to set my face I like to go in with my sponge and dab this literally everywhere and let my face bake as well but after that's all done I just take a stippling brush and just start buffing out this powder into my skin just so again because it's full coverage translucent if you leave it too long you will get like the splotches of powder everywhere so I don't like leaving it on for too too long like honestly like a minute or two at the very 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 most So as you may or may not know, recently I haven't been loving the whole contouring trend. I've been liking more so to bronze my skin. So I'm going to go in with my MAC. This is the Matte Bronzing Powder. And I'm honestly just going to take it on a stippling brush. And I'm just going to start warming up my skin. This way it's going to be a little bit more soft and subtle. But it's still going to give me color to my face. And I like how it's matte. It says matte, but I feel like it's a little bit luminous. But it's like a nice warm bronzy color, but it's not super, super orange, which is really, really nice. Of course, I like to take this a little bit on my nose, not to contour, but just to add like some general color to the area so it kind of blends in better. Gonna go in with my ride or die blush. Pretty sure I've used this blush for the last two of my tutorials, so I apologize if you have to see it again. But this is my Benefit California blush. First of all, packaging is adorable. Second of all, the color is beautiful. So I'm honestly just gonna go on the same brush and just apply this to my cheeks. Ooh. It just gives me a nice little bit of like golden flush, golden peachy flush to the cheek. And it smells so good. It smells really, really good. So before moving into everyone's favorite part, the highlighter, I'm going to go in with a little bit more of my Basquiat eyeshadow palette and really define my lower lash line. So I'm going to go in with Neo again, so just that purple that we popped all over the lid. I'm going to go in with a smudgy brush and take a 1960, so that pink color right over here. I'm going to smudge it out with the pink to give almost like a nice gradient. So I know this highlighter that I'm about to use, I have for surely used in my last two videos, but it's just so good and it just complements my skin tone really nicely, but it's the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighter in, I want to say Precious Petals. Ooh, it is fierce like ooh, ooh. like can we can we talk about that glow this ish this is my ish right here my favorite thing about this product is that it's what like $3.99 $4.99 so it's super super affordable so if you're looking for a good highlighter but don't want to spend like 30 or 40 dollars go to your local drugstore Walmart whatever and try to pick up precious petals because it is absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to demonstrate on, this is my Lexi Tapered Highlighting Brush. I'm going to go in with this guy. 
start highlighting my life away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right on the tip of the nose. Keep its bow and chin. And above here, because this is my favorite spot to highlight. Oof. It just blends so nicely and it's just so pigmented. It looks so good. So for my lip color, I honestly don't have any Ryder Dye lip products. Um, because everything that I own for my lip colors, I love, 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 but there's nothing that I can really live without. I can't live without any of my lipsticks. I'm a lipstick junkie, lipstick whore. That's me. So I'm going to go with my new lipstick from the Urban Decay Jean-Michel Basquiat collection in Epigram. Oof. It's a pretty color. Like It's like a burnt orange nude. So pretty. And since we've already primed our lips, I'm going to go straight into this guy. Oof. So dark. Ooh. Love it. So that is just the end of this tutorial. If you loved it, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button as well as that like button down below and just let me know if you like this tutorial or what kind of videos we want to see. Just leave me comments in the comment section about what kind of videos you want me to film next. But yeah, that is just the end of today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to see me every single day or whatever. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm going to start posting every single Sunday and Wednesday. Sunday and Tuesday, I don't know. But for sure, every single Sunday, I'm going to be uploading a video. So you don't want to miss out on me. So if you don't want to miss out on me, subscribe and the bell icon. But also, don't forget to stalk me on my social platforms. Kiana Karen's XO on pretty much everything. It's always listed down below. But yeah, we are at the end of this video. And I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.